Hey, what's going on YouTube, and welcome to my first look at the Cisco E20 IP phone. Now, you may be wondering, it's 2017, Is why is this just now a first look? Wasn't this discontinued in 2014? Well, yes, it was, but this one here that I'm using, the 7985, was discontinued in 2008, but still works for home lab and home production uses. If you haven't seen my... 8865 video, one of the reasons I got the 8865 is because we use video intercoms. We have them spaced between uh, the different homes. I have a CryptoMap VPN uh, between my house and my mom's house, which is 1,200 miles away. And she has a phone like this, and the issue with the 9971s, which technically these, the 9971s replace these with, have a lot of issues with wireless, with videos video calls between the 7985 so the main reasons I'm trying this one is one for the style because this particular style for video intercom is nice this is also an upright uh, unit and uh, cost this one I picked up for sixty dollars on eBay you can see them anywhere between sixty and ninety dollars and some of the ninety dollar ones even had two uh, some had like uh, maybe like a scratch on the screen or some cosmetic issues but for an ultra budget, I mean that's better than spending you know two hundred dollars for eight hundred uh, eighty-eight sixty-five for example. Uh, for uh, if you don't have that kind of money, so for me, I wanted to find a budget phone. Technically, hardware support is good through October of this year, so it's not totally dead like this one. But a couple things is again, see if it the, the overall functionality will be the same as this and then also make some test calls because I also have a CTS-20 in my living room we use on our main TV that I use to call my mom or mother-in-law even with their video endpoints and uh, which are the uh, 7985s so yeah let's let's take a look in the last video I don't know what I did with my box cutter uh, this one I believe is used it was listed as new uh, open box which to me just means used I mean why would you have an open box and call it new and I suppose it could have been opened and never used but I'm pretty when it comes to eBay I'm pretty skeptical on that I'm always happy when I buy stuff on eBay and things actually work as advertised when you get them for such a low cost all right, so this opens forward. Uh, it's got the directions on literally how to take it out of the box. It's kind of funny. Um, it's got this half-hearted piece of plastic on it. And yeah, there's uh, there's smudges, uh, dents, and dings on here. So even though, like I say, it said new in box. Um, I didn't actually think that was the case. So you can kind of see the size. It's got a bigger screen. And that's one of the things I was looking for. Well, they did include a power cord. Usually they don't do that. Alright, so we got the handset here. And these I don't actually usually use. Um, usually, if uh, the handset base on this one can be taken off, I'll do that because we just use them uh, for the speakerphone. So we got Ethernet cable, uh, the power. I've never purchased a Tanberg. This is my first time buying a Tanberg device like this, other than like a EX90. And uh, maybe these come with power supplies. Most of the Cisco phones and stuff don't. I believe these should be PoE, so move some of this out of the way here. Yeah, so this has, this can be, looks like it can be detached. Well, you might need to unscrew it, it looks like. So, and if that's the case, I'll be unscrewing this off but for the time being. As the sun starts to peer in, I guess we can hook up the handset for now. Now I'm going to see if I can close that. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap the, the cable from the old 7985 to the not as old E20. Alright, so apparently these do not support power over Ethernet. I guess I haven't really re researched them, other than looking at the, 
the model. So that's actually, and if that's the case, when you buy them for really cheap, you might want to make sure it has a power cord. Because uh, I actually have seen some that go for like $40 that don't come with any cables or, or a handset. Alright, so I just plugged it in. Got the little privacy shade on here. We can zoom in a little bit. Now supposedly you can register these with the VCS or CUCM. I intend to use this with CUCM. And this actually looks like the C20 background that I have. And I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, this is going through the setup. So we got English. Alright, so we got the infrastructure mode. It says Tamburg VCS. And see, so there's a Cisco option on here. Let's try that. And looks like it wants a username and password. Alright, so brand new out of box, I have no idea how to configure this thing. So I am going to research that, see how to get it registered with the call manager, and we'll continue. Alright, now for this clip, I've changed my shirt to denote I'm inserting this post, the actual recording. I was doing a screen capture, well, at least I thought I was, and I wasn't recording the screen just the webcam. So I thought I would insert this post editing to review what I went through live that you can't actually see. So basically from what I researched, uh, you need the TE4 to really be able to do anything with Call Manager natively. So what I did was is I downloaded this uh, TE417 crypto version for CUCM. I then copied that over to my TFTP slash SFTP server. And initially when I was in my call manager, I went to device defaults here and I searched for E20. And there was no default firmware with the installation that I had. So with that file, I went to the OS administration. And then from here, went to install upgrade selected my server like this and then selected this file next and it installed successfully and that's how back over here this was populated so that was all done automatically with the install. And then for the phones, I built the E20 profile just like any other and just gave it an extension and set the non-secure secure SIP profile just like pretty much all the other phones. And then on the E20 interface, it was a little different like this. It had Tamburg and it was red, but there's this option to upgrade the software because I had to manually upgrade it. I couldn't get it to upgrade automatically. So what I did was from my command prompt, I issued a TFTP I, put in my TFTP server and then get, and then downloaded the actual package file instead of the signed cop file that I uploaded to CUCM. So I downloaded the package directly from CUCM to my local directory and it was able to browse and click on install s software. And then from that point is where the video is going to continue. So that's in a nutshell what I had done in real time that I didn't record. All right, so now that's on the TC code, uh, you can see that we have a Cisco logo now. Instead of uh, the Tamburg E20 we saw originally. So that's a good sign. Alright, so now we have a different interface. This is a little easier. 
because uh, before, apparently on the TC2 code, it wasn't familiar for this, so... Uh, um, I did have to change a static IP. For some reason, it picked up an IP that was already allocated for some reason. So I should make sure this is still set up for DHCP. Yeah, it's still on the uh, static, so let's see if we can... Which is the DHCP. Alright, seems frozen for a moment. Hey, right, look at that. It's registered now. See, it's refresh. Cool. So. Cool. So, so now I am controlling. Let's see, zoom out. The camera from my living room. There's the eighty-eight sixty-five we got before. Oops. Let's see. pretty cool all right well that was a little bit more of a hassle as far as uh, you definitely need to make sure you're on TC4 in the situation that I had um, I was able to download the TC4 I then had to download the actual package file from my call manager to my desktop and then manually upgrade it from here and once it was upgraded then I could choose the UCS or CUCM and just put it and then it actually just saw it found it through uh, DHCP once I switched it so so let's uh, let's have a look and see what it looks like from the other side all right so here's the other view and so when I uh, so what I'll be doing is sending this to my mom and so when we have our video calls uh, we'll be sitting on the couch and seeing her from this perspective and then she will see the perspective you just saw and be able to control the camera and so now I'm switching to the handset just to, so I know there's a lot of background noise around here compared to when it's on speaker, but here's an idea on what this sounds like. So at any rate, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. All right, guys, and just for a quick comparison, I just wanted to show the quality of the uh, 7985, which uh, uh, she's been using. So as you can see, the, uh, it's kind of more of a boxy frame. It doesn't have as crisp of a resolution. I mean, it's decent, but uh, having that full uh, full screen, crisp and clear, I think is going to be pretty good. Plus, we'll have a better compatibility, I think. So, uh, again, uh, thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next video.